What's up, people? We're back for the final part. Um, right, so where were we going? Right, so you're in the house. You met the skateboarder. You had a brilliant time. You seemed like a brilliant dude at the skateboarding place. Um, and again, it has nothing. I could have said skateboarding. I could have said basketball. Like I could have said football. It makes no difference, really. So again, for people thinking, oh, you know, it's a generalization or this or that. It's not. It really isn't. Um, I've been around a lot of people in my time. I'm just using any random um, scenario. You met the skateboarding park. Seemed like a, a cool dude. Um, he says, right. Um, you know, you got you got on really well with the guy. He says, look, um, what you're doing later on? You've gone back to the house. They've offered you a drink. Then they've sat you down and offered you food. You know, um, everyone in the house seemed genu genu genuinely friendly. These are the most friendly people that you can come across. You you know, you find it hard to believe. Um, some people are even walking around offering you things that you you know you don't really want to be taking. Right? Okay. Um, what it seems like they're going out their way basically to make you feel comfortable. That's the best way of putting it to you. One way or another. They make, they're going out their way to make you feel comfortable. Um, they then say to you, you know, what are you doing tomorrow? Um, and you say, you know, not much, blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, why don't you come around again? You can always come around. And you go around there the second day. And they're doing the same thing. They're offering you this. They're offering you that. And you're taking it. You know, you're taking it. Um... Now, this is where things kind of change. I want you to listen to this very carefully now, okay? Um, this is where things change, okay? Because what I want you to imagine now, imagine that, say, by the next week of you going back to that house, okay, that you're either... You're either... What we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to stick to two personalities. We're going to say you have a personality A that clicks on and realizes now that these people have done a lot for you in the house and you want to show your appreciation. So personality A by the second week goes into the house with a pack of beers and said, "There you go, guys. Thank you for giving me beers, man. Look, I bought some beers this time. That's personality A. I bought some beers." Um, and I've got us some food. There's some food being ordered here. Or maybe you prepared the food and said, look, I bought some food. I would like you to try. I want here some food. I want you guys to try, you know. Or maybe you order food and you pay for it. You say, you know what, guys, I'm going to order some food for you guys to pay for. Okay. That's personality type A. Okay. Because, um, or personality A may come around with a couple of beers and says, you know what, if they know how to cook, they say, you know what, guys, um, you're not always going to be cooking for me this time. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into the kitchen and cook. If the person's able to cook, you know, because it's, let's face it, it's not everyone that can. But you're, you're trying to match it so that you don't become kind of dead weight, so that they're not carrying you in a sense, you know. Um, now we want to move into, so so if we looked at it from a, um, from a big standpoint, now if we looked at the whole picture now, before we move on to personality B, what's happened is, um, you can almost say from an outside perspective, we can say that there's this group of good people inside of this house and they're all looking after each other. They're all quite friendly. They're all quite nice. And another person's joined that group. And what that person's done is they've adapted. They've adapted to how that group is. Uh, remember they say you're only as strong as your weakest link. Okay. What they've done is they've kind of adapted to that group. And have become a contributing member of of the group, okay. Um, and the group, by in that way, has become stronger. It's become stronger, okay. That group now is able to to, you know, if you think of it even like a civilization in the forest, that group is able to build more, do more because they have more people. They're able to do more, okay. They have more hands. Now we're going to look at um, personality or scenario B where you've got someone that's come into that house now and rather than realise what's going on, okay, because we established from the very first video that, you know, it's not everyone, um, 
you know, that she turned the good guy bad. But we're going to forget about the good guy bad thing. We're just going to say, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a personality now that knows that um, that is uh, that, that I would describe as kind of like a bum or a sellout or or you know a freeloader that kind of personality now let's assume that that person comes into the house now people are giving them beers they're giving them food and this or that that kind of person um, really is kind of a minus this is why I try to say to people in my what is a bum the first video is a minus because what they're really doing is they're strictly taking they're not really contributing anything they're taking and um, other people in the group therefore have to kind of carry them to a certain degree and if you look at it from an outsider's perspective um, then what you've got is you've got a group that's based basically building things and you've got almost like a mole you know like they say find the mole like um, you know find the mole it's almost like who is you know we had a group that was sufficient and it was building and it was building at a steady pace but now it's only building at half the capacity now when I go into the fridge to pull out a beer, there's no beers there. But we never had this before, because if the beers were gone, someone would always make sure they were, we, we, they were refilled. Before, if someone took a, a, a can of, of, of my beers, then they would make sure it was replaced. You know, we would never have, we would never walk into the kitchen and there's, there's never any beers there, or there's never any food there. Now for some reason people are complaining and talk about why should I cook today? People are talking about why should I always buy the beers? Why? This never happened, so who is the mole? Who's done this? Now the scenario has changed. Because that person's come into the house and rather than contribute, they've, been, they've, they've become literally dead weight. And if you look at it in like a civilization thing, almost like when I was saying to you about the forest, if you look at it like... Um, uh, a member of a community that's joined this kind of um, say it was a sect although I don't believe in sect but say it was a sect in the forest that um, that person that's coming to the group is now being carried he might as well sit on top of someone's shoulders and they literally carry him around or her for that matter they're being carried um, they may you may even go as far as to say it's almost like they're sabotaging things as well because they're not really they're um, they're taking, but they're not really giving. Um, they're creating a kind of divide to a certain degree. Um, so the personality A blends in with the group. Um, and there's no way in hell that no one can say anything about personality A. Because personality A isn't taking more. Um, but they're not giving more. They're just basically blending in. That's all they're doing. It's never a case of you having to give more. If you... If I come round your house and you give me two beers, I don't suddenly have to then buy you back ten beers. It doesn't always have to be that way. You know, I can just simply give you back what you give me. Okay? Um, but personality B now is almost kind of like someone that you have to kind of, almost like babysitting someone. It's almost like babysitting. You know, it's like having a child around you that you have to look after. Yeah? It's personality B that you don't want to be like. You don't want to be someone that someone has to kind of clean up after. Um, someone has to kind of wash your dishes when you finish your food. And like I said already, it's like I said to you that, you know, if we're below 18, then you can give that person kind of leeway. But after 18, where you become an adult, there should be no environment that you walk into and people should be carrying you in any shape or form. Um, what was the last thing that I was going to say? It was just on my mind, actually. Oh, damn, right. Um, it will come to me. But there should be no environment that you walk into where people should literally be carrying you. It shouldn't happen. Um, <sighs> I forgot exactly what I was going to say. Right, so but what I will do in the meantime, I will get into super bum. Right. So, what is a super bum? So we've established in the previous videos, like my, you know, not the previous videos, but my very first video I did, what is a bum, right? So now there's a term of a, uh, what I would class as a super bum. And it said to me, and someone said to me, well, look, what is a super bum? A super bum to me is someone that literally walks into a room. It would be personality B. So they walk into that house. And what they do is they turn around and they say to people, um, after the people are feeding them and giving them the bears and things like that, 
They then may walk away from the house and they may have bad things to say about the house. They may say the house is smelly, they may say the house is dirty, they may say the people in the house is filthy. But yet they still continue to go back to the house. Yet they're still continuing to have food be fed by the house. They're still continuing to have drinks by the house. Still using, still going into the house and people are clearing up after them, cleaning up after these people. Yet they're walking away from the house and they're saying bad things about the house, how the house is smelly, the house is dirty. They don't mention how they don't clean up after themselves, how they don't contribute food. That would be a super bum. Because it's one thing taking and not playing your part. Like I said to you about what is a bum video, being a minus. It's one thing being a minus. But then being a minus that actually talks, that actually, as Jamaicans would say, never bite the hand that feeds you. It'd be, it'd be someone that is literally degrading someone that's gone out of their way to help you and help you in a positive way. You know, um, so a super bum is someone that generally, um, generally doesn't do anything, isn't a positive in anyone's life, but has a hell of a lot to say to people they shouldn't do this they shouldn't do that but yet it's taking from people and never giving that is a super bum what is a bum a bum is someone again for the last time is someone that's a minus on society that strictly takes a super bum is just generally someone that talks on top of that that's what a super bum is but for the younger generation that's out there i say to them it's important that when you walk into environments any environment that you are that you carry yourself, you know. Um, there are many ways, don't allow people to, someone shouldn't have to walk up to you and tell you, you should know anyway. And that's the last thing that I was gonna say that I forgot to mention, and this is important before we end this, we've got three minutes, right. So, assume I walked into your house. You're always doing stuff for me. I then suddenly say, you know what? Let me buy you a beer. And you say to me, no, 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 no. You don't have to buy me a beer. But yet you're always giving me beers. I say to you, let me buy you some food. And you say to me, no, 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 no. But you're always buying me food. That's disrespectful. The fact that you're not allowing me to kind of equal up my debt with you is disrespectful to me. And if I was your friend, and we were friends, I'm going to have to pull you up on that. This kind of goes back to those kind of um, cowboy and Indian movies where um, the cowboy, the Indian, when the, um, when the person was leaving, it'd probably be a white westernized cowboy, but when, as he was leaving, the chief would say, take my... Take Take, a, take my gift to you. And the gift would be something basic or this or that. Or the gift may be food. It would be disrespectful for the cowboy or the person that stayed with these Indians and helped them or this or that to then suddenly say, no, no, I don't want your gift. I don't want your gift, mate. Keep it. It would be seen as disrespectful and rude to refuse a person's gift. So if you're around someone that's helping you and you then try to do your part by helping them back and they say no, you should pull them up about it. Billy, why is it that, you know, you give me a few drinks of this and that, you give me food, but now when I'm offering it to you, you're refusing it. Why? Why are you doing that? That's what you want to ask them. And sometimes you'll find, and this is important, again guys, this is important. Sometimes the reason why the person's refusing it may have something to do with you. It may be the fact that you're a person where if someone, if you do a tiny little favour for someone, you then think the person owes you. And it could be something really tiny, like giving you a pound or something like that. You then now believe that you can knock at someone's door in the middle of the night and say, listen, mate. You know, you owe me because, you know, I gave you a pound and all of that. And maybe the person said to themselves, I don't want nothing from you. But that 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 would be an insult um, to you. And it's something then that you need to self-reflect and ask yourself, am I doing those? Am I doing that thing? 
because that's something that you need to change. If people refuse your gifts or refuse your efforts to try and equalize things, you need to look at that and ask yourself why. Why are they refusing to allow you to equalize, to pay your debt? Why are they allowing you to do those things? Because it's really important, you know. I'm glad I mentioned that, I really am, and I could not. Um, it's really important that when you try to equalize your debt and the person says, you know, I don't want it from you, but yet is still giving you things, you as a man or a woman should then A, refuse. So if that's the case, you know what? I'm no longer accepting anything from you anymore. I don't want nothing from you, if that's the case. Only a bum would then still continue to A, be in the person's company because they've insulted you, and B, continue to take things from them. That's only a bum would do that. Unless, of course, you're handicapped or something like that, and you need it desperately. Because we all, no one is too proud to, we all get by. Um, no one can survive in this world by themselves. We all need someone. We all need someone. Um, but generally, it will get to a point where you'll be able to return a favour. And if someone's refusing it, then A, I would stop taking stuff from them. B, I may cut them off and say, you know, you're looking down on me. You know, in the beginning, you were just kind of being pleasant and hospital, hospitable to me. But now I see that this whole thing is kind of a way just of you kind of um, being able to kind of gather kind of favours or gather some sort of this is more like a narcissistic way of you kind of maybe seeing yourself as better than other people because the reality of it is is that any relationship is a two-way thing you carry me sometimes I carry you but the point I'm trying to make is that you know when you do suddenly reach out and 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 do your bits as a friend um, to play your part and the person refuses it you need to sit them down and ask them why why are they doing that and find out the reasons to it because some people the reason why they're refusing your favors or gifts or whatever a is because you know I'm not going to say a and go into the whole reason but another reason could be that your gifts are just petty if I'm giving you a plate of um of of, of I'm giving you a whole bowl of food when you come around my house and then I go around your house and you give me a, a little kiddies bowl of food, I may refuse it and say, you know what, I don't want your food. So it may be the fact that um, that you're, you're, you're not matching it. You're not doing, you're not equally matching the same strength and it's an insult to the person because they're saying, listen, I put myself out for you and I don't ask much. Um, and I do it with a smile on my face. I enjoy doing these things. But when it comes to you doing it, it seems like it's a struggle. And you're screwing up your face when you have to do it as well. And you're giving me a small portion, almost like you're you're just doing you're just you're doing whatever it takes to kind of of to kind of you're not doing it because you're enjoying it, you're doing it because you have to kind of pay me back and you're doing the least amount just to say you did, you know. Here, take take a bowl of food. That that that's enough. Take an apple. That's enough for the two barrels of apples that you dropped off. And maybe the person doesn't want it. But what I'm trying to say is that try always sit the person down and ask them why. Because if they're refusing to accept your gifts, um, it should be seen as an insult towards you. If not, then you most likely are a bum. I'm sorry to say it to you. You should see it as an insult. You know, but there can be many reasons why people are refusing your gifts. Another reason could be is that they just don't want to, if they accept your gifts, it means that you're, they they have to, um, it they means that they have to be stuck with your company. Maybe they're refusing your gifts because they don't want to be your friend. They don't want you around them. These are, there could be a whole host of reasons, but get to the point as to why they're refusing it. Okay. Because this is just as important as someone being lazy and, 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 and taking other people for granted. You know, this is just as important. So I hope you've kind of learned something. Uh, the, it's gone really dark now anyway, but it's, it's not about, um, it's never been about graphics and glamour and, and glitter and all that kind of stuff. It's been about the words I'm saying to you. And I hope you've kind of gathered what I'm trying to say about taking people for granted, guys, you know. Um, I put a little bit, you know, I put as much effort as I can into these videos. I will leave a link if I haven't already to the video that I was talking about um, where it says, you know, learn to master these important skills in life if you want to succeed. I'll leave a link to that. Thank you for watching my video. Um, the Corona is still around. This is um, Saturday the 18th of um, January, March, April 2020. We're still in the midst of the Corona. 
um, wear your masks, um, wash your hands on a regular basis, um, help those elderly people out there that need your support, knock on their doors, see if you can buy some food for them, obviously, um, out of, you know, get them to, to give you the money for it, um, nothing is free, but go out there, do the shopping for them, help them, um, yeah, do your part guys, and, um, you know, stay strong, stay strong, I'll see you again soon, All right, thank you for watching, peace.